hey guys welcome back so in this new section we're going to be implementing open id connect identity providers in our app that's a mouthful but i'm just going to kind of break it down for you so i'm on the openid.net slash connect website and it has a little write-up as to what open id connect really is so in a nutshell it allows clients clients being your website your app whatever it is that the, your customer or your users are using that front facing that's your client it allows clients to verify the identity of an end user based on the authentication performed by an authorization server as well as obtain basic profile information of the end user um, in a rest like manner so in a nutshell anytime you go to an app and it allows you to say sign in or log in with facebook or with google right and you just tap that button and you see it goes over to google and you, you whether you have to type in your credentials or maybe you're already signed into google on that machine or on that device and it just allows you to go through and then all of a sudden you're signed in the new website has all the information as provided by google google provides an open id connect service so in the next section what we're going to do is go through how you can go about getting the key and secret from google and then how we integrate it into our app going forward all right guys so in this lesson we're going to just quickly walk through how we can get the client key and the secret that we need from google to allow us to authenticate against google accounts now you can navigate to the cloud platform by going to console.cloud.google.com you will have to sign in with a google account and then you would get access to this dashboard and that would be similar for any of the other providers you will have to sign in with an account that belongs to that provider in order to get access to the back end where they give you the keys right so after you've logged in or you created your google account and you've accessed a similar screen to this you want to go to credentials and then you're going to click create credentials so out of all of these options we're choosing oauth client id because that's what we're after and then we specify what kind of application i'm just going to say web application but you see you have different options and you can give it a specific name if you wish so you could call it classifieds or you know whatever your project is and then you go ahead and hit create and once you hit create they will give you that id and that secret and that's it so you need to copy these values and remember that we have to use these in our app so you want to keep them safe at least uh whether they download the json or not but keep them safe for now it doesn't make sense if you try to copy mine because by the time you're doing this course i would have destroyed the evidence anyway so i recommend that you try to get your own key and secret and then you can have your own controlled experience on your end so when we come back we'll be integrating these into our app so after we've retrieved our keys we're going to jump back over to our app and we're going to go to the startup class where we want to add a new block that we're going to say services dot add authentication so remember last time or earlier in the course when we we're doing this we had added the add google to the services dot authentication um, block where we were specifying that we we're using the cookie auth right so we actually could have removed it because we, we did other things that handle all of that but now we can go back for it and we'll add on google right and whichever other provider make sure you have the required library so for that one in case you may have removed the libraries since we didn't use it you definitely need to have um, microsoft.asp.core authentication google so if you don't have it you can just go and find it in you get packages right and i still have all the other packages from the other providers that we may not end up using right now but you know those are the libraries that you need in case you choose one of the above and not necessarily google as i'm demonstrating so back to the startup after we've added google we want to say options and then we have our object block where we're saying google options that client id is this and the secret is that now we already discussed that it's a bad idea to one put the the id and secret values dead in the startup 
the alternative probably would have been the app settings but then between the two of them we would definitely be checking it into source control and if it's a publicly accessible source control um, like github and their repo is public then that's a very bad idea so what we want to do is add them to the secret so we just right click our project and then we go to manage user secrets which will then give us our secret config file right so i'd already kind of retrofitted it with the um, client id and secret so now we practically get to see how it's used so we will take this value so that is the client id put it here this is the client id for google and then we do the same thing with the secret put it over here for the secret and once again you follow that same pattern for facebook twitter etc etc right so once we do all of that what we're going to do is say configuration configuration and the key that we want would be google colon client id right so google colon client id and then we would repeat that for the secret so it's google colon and i did say client secret so it is google colon client secret and just like that we have securely added the auth um, keys and secret or key and secret to our application now after we've added this authentication configuration look at what happens when we go to the login screen to the right you're going to see that you have the service google to use right so remember when we did it manually we are the ones who actually listed them out the facebook the twitter etc etc we listed them out now the scaffolded login page already had the mechanism you remember over here I had a little write-up about the external um, providers and so on because what's happening in the file or in the in the code behind rather is that it is let me just quickly find that login logic on get it is saying get me the external authentication schemes courtesy of sign in manager so sign in manager is actually going to go to the startup and say are there any other schemes defined here in the startup we saw oh yes you have google okay so we'll add the google button for you right so in that login um page if there are none then you get the right up otherwise list them out and for each one just create a button with the provider name that's all that's really happening right so sometimes you know we scaffold these things and we see them and we say oh we don't need that and we just remove them but it's always good to understand why you see certain things at a certain time what configurations are needed to get certain things to work and this is certainly one of the configurations that you rarely see people actually take the time out to go through step by step and help you to understand so that is basically how you would start adding them and i could you know as many as you chain on here like we saw with the twitter the facebook etc etc as many as you chain on you're going to get those buttons automatically so i'm just doing this step by step little by little when we come back we will test together how that login logic works all right guys so we're back and the objective this time is to verify that our login actually works so the first step one is go to the login page step two is click the google button so when we click google what you're going to notice is that it's navigating away from our app right so we are at localhost something and then when we click that it's actually navigating away so make sure you have internet when you're doing this of course and it is trying to go to accounts.google.com sign in and they're giving us an error so the error here is a 400 which means bad request and this is the reason Re redirect yuri mismatch so they give you a little reading and you can see i was doing some reading just to make sure that i fully understood it and if you click request details then they're going to tell you if you are the app developer make sure these request details comply with google policies so they're giving you what the redirect theory needs to be which is local host which they know where you're coming from but you need to have that endpoint on it so i'm going to copy this and then i'm going to jump back over to my credentials manager 
and that client that we had created the the same one with the app id and the secret what you want to do is go down to the authorized redirect uris so you're going to add URI and then put in that url or URI <laughs> that link and then you click save and then once that is saved what i'm going to do is just click back and then we're going to click google again and this time you're going to see that it is now asking me to sign in with my account so i'll do just that and after providing my email address password and potentially getting challenged for 2fa um, verification by google i'm now led to this page where it says do you want to associate your google account and then they give you the email address and ask you to register now you'll see that the page that it navigates to is identity slash account slash external login and the return url is just whatever that is right so that is the page that you can modify now if you wanted to add or allow the user to add more details than just their email address because this email address is going to double as their username and they won't have a first name last name etc granted you can probably tweak the settings a bit more with google to say get more information from google about this user so i can fill into my system i'm not going to go into all of those things right now um so you can look out for that now another thing that you may end up getting is one of those 400 errors after you try to log in with the google credentials you might get that same 400 page if you do you can probably come back here and just add the url without the slash sign in google just add that as another URI. because what happens is that these urls tell google what my client should look for or should navigate to when it is finished with google so or what google should try to navigate back to when it is finished doing its thing so that's a part of that security remember when we were talking about setting up the secure registration and login how we always do the redirect the local redirect so that we make sure we're redirecting to a page in our app that is similar to what google is trying to accomplish here to say what domain should i always look for whenever i am finished um authenticating this person so you may end up needing to add another entry and it's simple it is add URI, put it there and save no harm done right there, right anyhow back to our app once i click register i am going to need to confirm my account that's fine we know that that is the standard procedure but i want to bring us over to the database so that we can see what is happening so in the database you're going to see a new user created with the email address um, i can just set this to true from here and uh, the security stamp all of these things no password no password is required because we're not handling the password for this user right this is a google user so all of those things that user account is created and then if we go over to aspnet user logins we would notice too that we get a new entry where we know the provider the provider key the display name and the user to whom this login is attributed all right guys so in this section we took a look at how you can set up google authentication and by extension the same techniques can be applied for other third-party oauth providers we only use google because maybe more the more than likely you have a gmail account or a google account and it's much easier to just get started with that but the techniques can be applied across the board certain things that we have to do one we have to go to that third party um, platform whatever it is whether it's google or windows or twitter or facebook we have to go there register a new web client and that would give us the necessary key and authentication credentials that we need to authorize our app we also need to put in authorized redirect urls based on our app domain addresses and then after doing that we would be encouraged to go back to our application and add user secrets or app secrets and store our client id and secrets there instead of in the regular configuration file or in plain text in the code right so you'd want to add those secrets to the app access them accordingly we add the authentication schema or schemas based on how many you have and then once that is done the app will automatically render them based on the boilerplate code 
from our scaffolded login and register pages. That being said though, we have successfully set up Google authentication in our .NET Core app. Thank you.